Today on All Things 80s, my thoughts on New York Comic Con 2021. Welcome back to All Things 80s, and I have just returned from attending my first ever convention, and that was New York Comic Con 2021. So, Mrs. 88 and I got there about 11. I didn't feel the need to be there just as the doors opened. And getting in was a very straightforward process. Uh, obviously, you had to prove you were double vaccinated. You had to wear a mask at all times. And I have to say, my ears are hurting today from wearing the mask for so long. But anyway, once in, we headed straight to the show floor and I was completely overwhelmed by the sheer size of it. I didn't imagine it was going to be quite as big as it was. And by all accounts, a lot of the big names weren't in attendance this year. But with that said, there was still a ton of interesting things to look at and buy. And we made a ton of purchases, which we'll show you towards the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. Now, in terms of vintage, it was a little bit disappointing. There was some vintage for sale, but absolutely overpriced. And in particular, I was quite shocked to see one seller had a big bucket of beater Star Wars figures, and those were going for $11 each. And in my opinion, they were worth no more than $3 each. But, you know, it is a convention. They've got to make their money, I guess. In terms of what was on offer, if you were a fan of Funko Pops, Marvel Legends, and to a lesser extent, Black Series Star Wars, there were tons of those for sale. Now, because I don't collect any of those lines, I'm not really familiar with the pricing, but some of the Black Series was a bit of a joke, given that I did take on a couple of large lots uh, almost a year ago to resell. They were charging things like 25 bucks for the Luke Yavin ceremony figure, which I could hardly give away. I think I ended up selling the one I had for about $4 or something. Um, also, the vintage Star Wars uh, toys that were there, uh, they were asking, I think it was in excess of $200 for an incomplete, dirty-looking AT-AT. They had a boxed uh, TIE Interceptor, which was interesting, but I think they wanted $800 for that, and it wasn't brand new sealed. It was used in a beaten-up box. The Funkos were just... Everywhere you turned, there were Funko Pops, and there were some of them selling for thousands of dollars. I'm like, wow. Um, now, like I said, Mrs. 80 and I bought a number of things, which I'm going to get to in just a moment. But one thing that really surprised me was there was only one booth that I really wanted to go to to make a purchase, and that was Tops, because I know they have the new Star Wars Battle Plan cards out in the market and it's my intention to buy a box of those from Tops. So when we got onto the show floor, made a beeline for Tops and inquired about getting a box of these cards because they had a glass display with packets of the latest uh, releases and was told, no, we're not selling these at this show, but if you like, you can buy a box of Garbage Pail Kids. I'm like, nah, no thanks. Hi, are you selling the hobby boxes of the battle plans? Yeah, we're not actually selling those here. Okay. Um, these are just kind of on display, but what oh. we are selling is our Garbage Pail Kids set, which has okay. exclusive New York Comic Con cards right. in it. And that's just at the end of the counter. All right, thank you. Fortunately, I did find another seller who was an independent seller, and I got a box. Now... In terms of it being overwhelming in, in terms of crowd numbers, it actually wasn't, but apparently they were only doing it on a 40% capacity compared to normal non-COVID years. And even at that, it was pretty busy at times. And I found myself getting a bit flustered by the crowd. And uh, also another thing is when I get hungry, I get pretty angry. What do they call that? Hangry? So uh, round about one o'clock, we headed down to the food court, but I was able to get myself some whiskey, some beer and some food and felt much better after that. Now, the highlight of the convention for me were the two encounters with William Shatner. The first being the autograph session, which I will show you right now what I picked up from that. 
So I managed to get my Captain Kirk Mago figure signed by William Shatner and it was just such a bizarre experience for me because back in the 80s when I was six or seven years old I would watch Star Trek and Batman and just to see him in person to see that same actor that I watched as a kid just brought back a lot of memories and it was quite emotional for me. Then later that day, excuse me, uh, William Shatner did a panel where he was mostly sort of talking, you know, philosophically about the world. And of course, he is going up into space next week. So there's a lot of chat about that. But it was just bizarre knowing that that was the person that I idolized as a young kid in the 80s. So it was a nice sort of fitting end to the day, I would say. So, like I said, I have no way of comparing my experience to any other conventions having not attended any, but I will say this, I will definitely go back next year. Um, the only concern I have is that it's going to be much, much busier. But with that said, um, it wasn't too bad this time. And yes, convention prices are just completely ridiculous. And in particular, uh, downstairs at the bar area, um, I think it was $11 for a whiskey and $9 for a small can of beer. So I, I wasted a lot of money at the bar, but in saying that I had a great time and I felt so mellow, so relaxed. And I think Mrs. 88 was quite happy because she could tell I was getting a bit edgy before lunch and before a drink. Now, I'm gonna go through all our purchases in order. And I think we did pretty well for ourselves. So let's see what it was that we all bought from New York Comic Con 2021. So the first stand that I encountered with anything of interest was a person who were just selling nothing but Lego minifigures. And I'm a sucker for Christmas. So I got a Christmas themed uh, Grogu in his pram, a Santa Claus Yoda, a uh, Santa Boba Fett and a Santa Darth Vader, which I think I may actually have already because I did get a few Christmas Lego advent calendars in the past. And this appears to be like a generic snowman. So that was the first thing we bought. And I think the offer was five figures for 20 bucks, which I know is ridiculous, but hey, it's a convention. The next stop we made was at a booth that sold magnets and pin badges. And I think their offer was four magnets for 20 bucks. So I picked up an Evil Knievel, an Adam West Batman, a Batman comic book cover, and Mrs. 88 picked out the Stranger Things. So next up, there was a stand that were selling various sort of plush items, and they had these pretty cool travel pillows. So Mrs. 88 chose the Red 5 X-Wing, and I went with the TIE Fighter. And what's cool about these is they have an uh, eye mask built into them. So you take the eye mask out and it has the Velcro so you can strap it on. So you can, you know, once the pillar's around your neck, you can put the eye mask over. And on the red five, it's pretty cool because they actually have the yellow uh, to sort of emulate Luke Skywalker's uh, visor. So those are pretty cool. And I believe we got the two of them, if I remember rightly, it was 35 per mask or two for 60, I think. So we took the, obviously the two for 60. We're gonna make great use of these when we go flying again. So hopefully it won't be too long before we can get these things used. Our next stop was at a booth that had a lot of ornaments and such like. So I saw this Wonder Woman statue and I thought, my God, I gotta have that. And uh, this, I think, was $50, which is probably way overpriced. In addition to Wonder Woman, I saw a Batman 66 item that I just had to have. And thinking about it now, I should probably have checked this on site because I've not opened this yet. And I don't know if it's damaged or not. And if it is damaged, what do I do? So this will be a, a, an unboxing, I guess, and hope to God it's uh, not broken because I've not actually seen this uh, in person yet. And I'm just thinking I should really have got this opened up. But then again, I didn't have any knife with me because obviously they were had to go through this 
you know, the security check very much like an airport, so I don't want to get flagged for bringing a knife in. And I normally have a small uh, keychain knife with my house keys. So, moment of truth. Oh, nice box inside actually, that's cool. Yeah, so there we go. It's the uh, Surf's Up Batman and from Iron Studios. I can't say I've heard of them before, but it looked nice on display. Ah, oh, a nice styrofoam insert as well. So, let's see what we have here. a bit nerve-wracking isn't it because if this is broken I, I guess I'm screwed so so far so good okay so I guess that's heavy so this is the Batman and this is I guess the capes plastic but everything else like, I don't know, I don't know what material that is, but it's very good weight to it. And that's a pretty good likeness of Adam West, actually. And I guess this is the base and the surfboard. Yeah, it's got a nice sort of uh, wave effect that's been cast. You see that? Yeah, that's really cool. Wow, and it says Batman, Iron Studios, one tenth deluxe. So I'm not sure if I, if I put this in, can I get this out again? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that. Probably, yeah, this was the best thing I bought all day. So from the one seller I got Batman, and Wonder Woman, again, two great things from my childhood. So very happy with these. So as I mentioned in the beginning there, I, my intention was to go straight to the Tops booth to get a box of these Battle Plan cards, but they weren't selling them. But I did manage to get a pack from an independent seller and I am really excited to get a look at these. It's saying there's two hits per box. So in due course, we'll do a nice uh, video ripping these all open to see what we get. And hopefully we get a nice autograph or something. Now, when we were taking the taxi into Manhattan, I was looking at the New York Comic Con app and happened to take a glance at the artist alley. And immediately a name jumped out at me, which was Alex Sanchez, who, as you will recall, him and I were part of the Iconicon heavy metal panel back in July. So went down to see him and I was amazed that he actually recognized me before I even said anything. And when him and I were chatting, Mrs. 88 was flipping through his portfolio and something caught my eye. I thought, oh, wait a minute, that's quite familiar. So he had done a piece of artwork for Gem and the Holograms based on Duran Duran's Rio album. So I thought, ah, oh, that's perfect for me. So I got this and had Alex uh, very kindly signed it for me. So this is really, really cool bit of artwork. So I'm so happy to have this. And it was such a pleasure to actually meet Alex in person. So I believe Alex appears every Friday night on the Infinity Equation podcast. So be sure to check that out on YouTube. Almost at the end, I promise. Um, so there was one stand that sold a lot of Harry Potter things and they had some magnets and whatnot and again it was one of those buy four for 20 bucks deals I think. So Mrs. 88 bought some Harry Potter uh, magnets. Uh, obviously I know that's Harry Potter. I don't know who the chick is and I don't know who this owl is but those are Harry Potter so to make up for the four for 20 bucks I got a Boba Fett and Mrs. 88 got this Harry Potter 
uh, money bank, so you stick your coins in the back there. It's actually quite nice. Nice sort of rubbery material. Um, don't know how much that cost, but she likes it. That's the main thing. And lastly, and I think I've mentioned this before, but Mrs. 88 is obviously from Thailand and is Buddhist. And she has a, a small sort of Buddhist shrine over there. And part of that shrine is a statue of a little boy whose name I think is either Kai or Akai. And she buys him toys and snacks and things. And apparently that he then grants good luck or whatever. So she wanted to get a toy for him. So this is something she bought, which is a Dragon Ball uh, character. Again, I know nothing about Dragon Ball. This is Super Saiyan Goku. So I don't know if anyone knows who that is, but this is what she bought for him. And I've seen here that this was $35, which to me is a little bit pricey, but there you go. So that was the extent of our Comic Con 2021 purchases. So that was my experience of my first ever comic convention. And I gotta say I had a great time, as did Mrs. 88. And if we're here in America this time next year, we will definitely return. So hope you enjoyed that. I want to say thank you for watching with special thanks going out to the patrons. Please like, please subscribe. And as always, stay tuned for more videos from All Things 80s.